So I've been doing some thinking. And it's come to my attention that whenever I'm on social media, and particularly Twitter, but other social media as well, there seems to be this thing, that I, this trend I notice amongst the fellow trans community, where any time you try to bring up a criticism of the trans community itself or a particular individual, it's always very telling how it takes very little to get, you know, a certain group of people, if not a large group of the trans community, to just start pointing the finger back at you and calling you a fucking transphobe, even if quite literally you yourself are trans. You see this a lot, especially with Marxists and tra liberal trans people, where it's just as if you can't say anything bad about trans people, about the trans community, or a particular individual, even if, say, that particular individual is justifiably just a terrible person, problematic, or just you know, there needs to be something specific about that person that needs to be pointed out. Such as the case with Dylan Mulvaney, you know, the criticism being, you know, she exploits her own community for monetary gain and then tries to lie about it, claiming, oh, well, this particular company didn't defend me, even though they did. So... Any sort of criticism made by trans people or Marxists or just any sort or just anybody really it doesn't even have to be a trans person, a trans Marxist, it doesn't have to be a cis Marxist, it doesn't even have to be a Marxist. For some reason, any sort of criticism of the trans community, any sort of criticism towards a trans person, all of a sudden. For some people, it's just it, like, no, you can't do that. You're transphobic. So does that mean that just you can't say anything negative about trans people? You can't say anything? You can't self-criticize our very own community? Because if that's the case and that makes you transphobic, then how are we supposed to have any room for growth and to have, like, meaningful conversations Especially when you consider there is so much stigma that goes goes on about the trans community by actual transphobic individuals. How are we supposed to address those concerns while also addressing potential problematic people or just in, in general spoiled people that are in our community if we can't criticize. That's my problem that I seem to have, and this is why a lot of times when things get brought up specifically by my fellow comrades, I feel almost like I have to take a side, and of course I'm going to defend my comrades before my fellow trans community. I'm sorry, but I'm just going to do that. Because... Most of the time, they're in the right on that. Now, if by some chance, there is just a fellow comrade that is having a shitty take. They know me well enough, I'm going to call them out on their bullshit and bring them back to, you know, terra firma where they rightfully need to be. But I'm going to do that also with trans people. The problem is, is le at least with most of my fellow comrades, they can accept that criticism because they know that's where self-growth and that's where the betterment of ourselves and our ideology comes from. 
But it seems like the trans community doesn't quite seem to have that, because they're incapable of taking criticism. And I'm not saying all trans people, but there is a pretty good, sizable chunk of the community that just seemingly cannot, dish, you know, cannot se seemingly take criticism very well. And that's a big problem. Because if you can't be criticized for something that is questionable or that comes you know, comes up and you just are going to scream transphobia, then where's our room for growth? And see, that's one of my problems with the trans community is that, and I think kind of why, why we're seen as so annoying to certain people and not in just a, not in like, you know, oh, you're so annoying, please die sort of way. Not like in a transphobic sort of way. Just they see us as annoying in an ideological sense because of the fact that identity politics is so staunchly ingrained. That that, that typical liberal mentality is so staunchly ingrained in the trans community, particularly in, in the West, particularly the United States. But it's not just an American problem. It's not just a Western problem. It's a trans community problem. It's like, as a trans person myself, it's okay to be trans. That's not the issue. Like, that's, that's not the issue that Marxists have with the trans community. The problem we have with the trans community is that they're unwilling to listen and they're unwilling to <clears throat> accept criticism and address certain issues that they really should be addressing, and or address, even if it's just simply a question. You know, this is why I myself, as a trans Marxist, feel like I have to be a spokesman in a way, or in this case spokeswoman, for my fellow community as well as trying to educate the trans community. And one of those things that I try to hammer to the trans community to sometimes it seems like limited avail is we need to be able to talk about things and we need to be able to take criticism address that criticism whether we agree with it or we don't but essentially we need to have a discussion about it and it's kind of hard to have that discussion if everybody's screaming transphobe and that is why people then end up having a problem with us. Again, not necessarily in the transphobic have a problem with us, but they end up finding us annoying because they think, oh, well, they're trans, so they must be all up their butt with identity politics. And that's the difference between me and a lot of trans people, is I also, is that I don't engage in the identity politics discourse because it's nonsense if we're going to to achieve progress and liberating ourselves then we have to do it in a meaningful productive way and one of those ways is by having these discussions it might be uncomfortable it might be hard nobody said it was going to be easy but i feel like that's and that's kind of the problem that the trans community has and and why they they do this why they go screaming transphobe because it's easy to go screaming transphobia than to actually answer the fucking questions and actually have those sometimes hard conversations but you know what it's called being a fucking adult and you know and being you know and Part of being an adult is sometimes we have to answer those very difficult questions, comments, concerns, 
whatever it is. But we have to handle our shit. Because otherwise, we, you know, we, we are going to find ourselves on the short end of the stick. And that stick is going to get even more shorter. And it's going to become more and more problematic down the line if we don't stop it. So, that's why we need to have these discussions. That's why we need to stop screaming transphobia at, you know, any sort of little criticism that gets thrown our way. Instead of getting upset or offended about it, address it. Let's have a discussion about it. I didn't want to do a script for this video because I wanted this to be just just spouting what came to mind. I really do think that we as a trans community have a long way to go. I think as a society we have a long way to go. But it starts with us. And I hate to be that person, but it does. It starts with us. Because no one else is going to give a shit. And no one else is going to answer our questions. Because, frankly, the only people that can answer the questions, the comments, the concerns, the, address the criticisms facing our community, is our community. And it's, you know, and I understand that sometimes those are going to be difficult things to answer, diff difficult, you know, criticisms to address. But we have to do it. Handle yo shit. <laughs> I'm Red Pagan Nicole, and this has been Red Pagan Corner. Super, 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 super.